Hi, everybody. Uh, know that I am having a great day. Um, my family is safe. Everybody's uh, pretty much safe uh, in, our, in our lockdown. Um, I hope you guys are having fun during the lockdown. I hope you're getting out in the sun. Uh, my older daughter is getting the lawn mowed and uh, I'm thrilled about that and some other you know my other family children are doing stuff around the house that makes it a lot easier to um, uh, live nicely uh, and uh, we're all having fun there at the house and I hope you guys are all experiencing the same thing being with family um, doing what you should be doing and um, It'll all work out for you, I know, because I know you all, and you're all capable. Every one of you is capable. Not only are you unfathomably precious, even if you don't do anything, um, I think you're going to end up doing things, right? That's the bottom line. And let's all thank God for all the skills and abilities that he's given each of us. Thank you, Jesus. So, uh, we've got some, we're, we're doing uh, chapter 21. Um, uh, we're doing the, the uh, standardized practice test right now, so be sure to get out some paper. Maybe you want to open your book to page 589, and then the standardized practice test follows that page. But on page 589, you have your study guide, and I'm going to write down the formulas on the board once again so that we can refer to them while we try to do the standardized practice test. Okay? And I'm going to put them on the far left. They won't be in your sight all the time during this, but I'm going to put them right here on the board, okay? And we'll refer back to this. So we know that an E field is defined as the force on a test charge divided by the charge on a test charge, okay? And we also know that when we, when we put... Coulomb's law in for this F because we know F is equal to K Q1 Q prime we can say divided by D squared when we put that in there the Q primes go away and that's equal to K Q1 divided by the distance squared okay you follow that all right uh, and then we also know that uh, the volts, the potential energy, electrical potential energy difference from being at one spot in an E field versus another spot in an E field, what you have here is uh, the work to move the particle from one spot to another uh, divided by the temp, to work to move a test charge divided by the test charge is the change in potential energy of that of that uh, from one position to another. It equals the work divided by the test charge or a joule per coulomb, a volt. I'm going to write that down. A volt is equivalent to a joule per coulomb. Okay? And uh, then we've got uh, uh, a, a capacitance, which is a, in units of farad, uh, and that's equal to the charge on one of the two plates of the capacitor, okay? Whether it be positive or negative, it's the amplitude of the charge. One plate is going to be positive while the other plate is going to be negative, okay? And unless the voltage potential across the two plates becomes so great that uh, a spark can pass from one plate to another, then your charge isn't going to be changing, okay? And so the charge on a, on a DC, you know, on a, on a capacitor divided by the change in potential, okay, that's equal to the capacitance. So this is a this is a constant 
of a, of, of, this is the slope of the line of charge versus uh, potential, change in potential across the plates, okay? The charge, the magnitude of the charge on any one of the plates, because there, if you added up the two charges, you'd get zero. So one, one plate is charged into the positive, the other plate is charged to the negative, okay? And so this charge that you experience on the plate versus the change in potential, this is, the D, this is DC volts here, uh, is, is a slope of a line. And that, this slope equals the capacitance. And the capacitance of a capacitor depends on the square area of the two plates, okay, and how far apart they are. There was another formula I remember about uh, ED. I think it's the electric, something about the electric field. Uh, maybe the force is equal to ED. No, delta V is equal to ED. That's what it is. So there's another one of these. This is the, in a uniform field. So this is for capacitor. This is for capacitors only. Capacitors only. Okay, there's another formula. This is the capacitance formula. Uh, and then there's the formula that uh, delta V is equal to the electric field that's constant inside a capacitor no matter where you are inside the capacitor divided by distance. Okay? So if you have any two of those, you can figure out the third one. And the concept there is that that's how it works. All right, so everybody knows these formulas. These are the formulas from chapter number 21. And now we're moving on to the standardized practice test. You'll notice there's 108 problems in this chapter. We're not going to do all of them. We're just going to do the standardized practice test. And we're going to be able to refer back to this as well as we can refer back to the chapter if we need to. But I'm, I'm assuming that we're not going to need to. Okay. Beyond writing those formulas down and jogging our memories if we're asked, being asked a question that's difficult to answer. Okay. So, number one on page 595. So now you're ready to start writing. If you haven't already written those formulas down, wouldn't hurt to put them up at the top of the page and convince yourself that these are indeed the concepts that you needed to learn during Chapter 21 studies. So why is an electric field measured only by a small test charge? Okay. So we're talking about measuring an electric field. Let's say, let's say you have a capacitor. So here's the plus side of a capacitor, here's the minus side, right? These are two conductors. The E field anywhere in the middle here is, con is constant. The force on a test charge right here, Q prime, will, and let's say it's a positive test charge. It's going to be in this direction, okay? But it's it's a small test charge relative to these, these two Q's. So here's, here's the, the Q plus, and here's the Q minus, right? And you've got uh, a voltage across here, which is the plus, this is the plus side of the voltage battery, DC battery, and this is the minus side, okay? So you're creating a positive charge on this plate and a negative charge on this plate. You've got this small test charge. Why is it important that that test charge be negligible? That's a big hint. I changed the word that was asked, that the question was asked. Uh, why is an electric field measured only by a small test charge? Okay. Let's see what these answers are. So the charge doesn't disturb the field. Boy, that sounds good. So the charge doesn't disturb the field. Exactly. 
Otherwise, you're trying, otherwise, you're messing up what you're trying to measure, right? How about B? Surely A is the right answer. Because small charges have small momentum. Nope. So if size doesn't nudge the charge to be measured aside, nah, size, what does size have to do with charge? Because an electron always is used as the test charge and electrons are small. Does that even sound reasonable? We're talking about a positive test charge, right? Okay. How do you make a positive test charge? Well, you take electrons away from a material by induction or conduction, whichever you prefer, and then you, uh, and then you have a, a positive test charge. You can always have a positive test charge to use as a test charge. So D doesn't make any sense. So the charge doesn't disturb the field is obviously the best answer, A. Right? You use a small charge so that you don't disturb the E field that's created here. All right? You don't have an E field uh, that is, if this is positive, right, you don't have this E field created by that positive charge causing a disturbance in this other E field you're trying to measure. Okay? And if you know the mass of that test charge, you can adjust the voltage here to see, uh, and you can use gravity, so the, when the floating, oh, this is positive. So in this case, you would need to have a negative test charge in order to make that drop float, okay? Because the positive plate is on the top and the negative plate's on the bottom. You've got the field force of gravity pulling down, right? There's the force of gravity pulling down on that drop, and then you need the electromagnetic force being equal to, uh, in, in, the, in that direction, you need this electromagnetic force to be equal, okay, and then the drop stay, it will float right there in between the plates. So you can use, you can, you can understand um, the charge on the plate, the voltage, the E field strength, and the distance here. And you know, and you know these, these kinds of things. Okay. You can determine the work required to move a drop from here to here by using the force of gravity. If, if it moves slowly, you know what I mean? You can understand the work involved. There's all kinds of ways of, of working out these, uh, these different variables when you have some of the variables. Lots of formulas here in definition. Okay. Number two, a positive test charge of 8.7 microcoulombs experiences a force of 8.1 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons at an angle of 24 degrees north of east. What are the magnitude and direction of the electric field strength at the location of the test charge? Did you all read number two now? Page 595. So this is number one. Number two. One is A. Answers A. Number two, positive test charge of 8.7 microcoulombs. All right, so here's a, here's a positive test charge, 8.7 microcoulombs. Can you see what I've just done on the board? Yeah. I'm going to move this down a little bit so that you'll be able to see the whole problem being solved. Okay, so there's my positive test charge. This is my diagram. It's in some E field, okay? So there's this E field. That's, that's putting a force on this thing, F is in this direction, 8.1 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons, and this is 24 degrees north of east. Everybody follow that? Okay. This, so this is the direction of east. This is the direction of north, okay? 24 degrees north of east. Now, what are the magnitude and direction of the electric field strength at the location of the test charge? What are the magnitude and direction? Well, we know the direction. Here, you know if the force is here, right? We, and it's a positive, this is positive, so whatever is making the E field 
And the, if the force is in that direction, so is the E field in that direction. So there's this E field created, okay? So we're trying to figure out the magnitude of that E field. Well, we know that E is equal to F divided by Q, right? Vector, vector. So E and F have to be in the same direction. And that's equal to 8.1 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons divided by uh, 8.7 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. That's a microcoulomb, right? So we're, we're almost there with number 2. This is E is equal to F over Q. Clear. On. All right. 8.1 divided by 8.7 equals 0 0.93. 0 0.93 newtons per coulomb. E. So the magnitude in the direction, and that is 24 degrees north of east. Okay? That is the direction. We put a positive test charge in an E field and it's moving in the direction of the E field. It has a force generated on it in this direction. This is 8.6 newtons. This is 24 degrees north of east. So we know the E field is in the same direction because it's a positive test charge. It might have been in the opposite. It might have been 180 degrees different if the test charge were negative, and the force were in that direction. You understand? Okay. I'm assuming you understand. Holler if I if you if you need any help with that. So number three. Here we are moving on to number three. Turn the computer a little bit. I'm gonna put a number three up here on the board. Looks like you can. Well, you can barely see that. I'm going to change the angle a little bit for number three. Oh, I wish those lights were not on here. Let's see. If I make this, if I if I make this chair higher, it'll be better. Let me do that. All right, now, woohoo! We are up there. Now, can you see the board without those lights? Yeah, look at that. Okay, so number three I wrote on the board here. I'm going to read the question now. What is the potential difference between two plates that are 18 centimeters apart with a field of 4.8 times 10 to the third newtons per coulomb. All right, so here's your two plates. We have, uh, what is the potential difference between the two plates? So here is, I'm gonna call this one positive and this one negative. And I'm gonna show this with a battery right here. And I'm gonna say delta V equals what? When I know that the E field strength is from here to here, this is all uniform in between these two plates, e uniform electric field, and we know that E is equal to uh, 4.8 times 10 cubed Newtons per coulomb, and that's down. Vector. Okay? Uh, 18 centimeters apart. Uh, so, I'm going to draw it over here. This D. D equals 18 centimeters. Can you see all that? I think so. I hope so. Okay. 
So the distance between those two plates is 18 centimeters. The question is, what's the potential difference? All right. Well, we know that delta V is equal to the E field strength divided by the distance for a capacitor. All right. We know that because it's given in our textbook. We talked about it somewhat in theory. Uh, but the bottom line is this formula is over here in my notes. And I've been asked a question. And I've got two of the, I've got two of the uh, unknowns in that formula that has a possible number of three unknowns. Sorry, I keep dropping the power cord. I'm going to get it again and put it back up there and plug in this laptop so it doesn't go out on me while I'm talking. There we go. Okay. So anyway, look at there. We know E, we know D, we know E, we know D. So now I know delta V. That is 4.8 times 10 cubed newtons per coulomb divided by 18 centimeters. But I gotta change that to meters, otherwise my units won't cancel correctly. Okay? I've got to change this to meters. 0 0.1, let's see, meters, centimeters and meters, there's two decimal places. 0 0.18 meters. Now, this kilogram, meters uh, per second squared, right, the newtons, this goes away, okay, meters go away. So now I've got, what's going on here? I don't have the right units. Kilogram meter per second squared is a newton, right? A joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. I think a volt, a volt, delta V is a, is, this is a volt, and we know a volt is equal to a joule per coulomb. All right? So why do my units not work out here when I'm doing E divided by D? Did I write that down wrong? I'm sure I didn't write that down wrong. This should be units of joule, which is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. Maybe this is not E divided by D. I think that's E times D. Let me look that up again in the chapter. Maybe I wrote that down wrong from memory. I did. I don't know how I did that wrong. Forgive me, you guys. My units weren't working out, so I figured out. I, I understand my uh, initial mistake right over here in my notes. The formula is delta V equals E times D not E divided by D. I don't know why I wrote it down wrong, okay? But notice how you figure this stuff out while you're putting things into practice. You know, did you notice how the units didn't work out? I don't have a joule per coulomb. So these units are wrong unless I multiply by 0.18 meters. All right? It's not E over D. It's E times D, all right? 4.8 times 10 cubed newtons per coulomb. Okay? Times 0 0.18 meters, okay? Well, a newton meter is a joule. I'm happy about that. Uh, I got joules per coulomb. That's what I should have, okay? So now I'm ready to do, grab my calculator. I, I, used, I had the wrong formula written down in my notes. Oh, shame. Oh, delta V, the change in potential, is equal to the E field strength times the distance, not divided by the distance. Okay? And a volt 
is a joule per coulomb. And this is a newton meter per coulomb or a joule per coulomb. So we're good to go. All right? 4.8 times 0.18 equals 0.864. Okay? 0 0.86 times 10 cubed volts. Okay? Uh, let's change that to uh, 860 volts, which is pretty much, that's a lot, 860 volts. Point, was that 0.18 centimeters or 18 centimeters apart? Let me make sure I did that right. In the question, it said eighteen centimeters. Okay, so I did that right. Point one eight meters. Okay, so eight hundred and sixty volts across. You know, eighteen centimeters is pretty far when you get right down to it. It's probably every bit of that far. So these plates uh, have a pretty ha must have a really high voltage in order to create that kind of an E-field over that distance, okay? And that makes sense to me. 860 volts, when you have uh, a capacitor with those dimensions, you need a lot of volts in order to get a strong, uh, an E-field across those plates. So that's not all that surprising, okay? Number three, done. Number four, let's move on. Number four. I'll erase number one and number two, and we'll do number four right here nearby, okay? All right, number four. How much work is done on a proton to move it from the negative plate to a positive plate 4.3 centimeters away if the field is 125 newtons per coulomb. Okay? So here uh, you got a drawing already in your book. I'll redraw it here so that everybody can understand. Number four. All right? So here's a positive plate. They decided to draw it in the vertical. Here's a negative plate. All right. You've got a positive test charge in the E field. Okay. The E field is, is uh, continuously the same between these plates. That's handy. So you don't have to worry about the force changing on the test charge as you move from one plate to another. Okay. So, how much work is done on a proton to move it from the negative plate to a positive plate 4.3 centimeters away? Okay, 4.3 centimeters away. The field is 125 newtons per coulomb. One E is equal to 125 newtons per coulomb. Okay? Now, we're going to move this positive test charge from here to here, all right, in a force. So we're going to have to, it's a force times a distance is the work. How much work is done on a proton to move it from the negative plate to a positive plate 4.3 centimeters away if the field is 125 newtons per coulomb? A proton. So this is a proton. So that tells us that the charge is the, um, What's that called? It's the, uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank. It's the elementary charge. The charge on the proton is the elementary charge, which is 1.602. The charge on that test charge is equal to uh, 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 Coulombs. I looked that up in the, on the back flap. Elementary charge. 
okay? It's a proton, so it's positive charge. It's going to move from this plate to that plate, so it's going to move from 4.3 centimeters. So what, we, what we're missing here to figure that out, what is the force on that positive charge if we're going to move it from the negative plate to the positive plate, okay? So what is the force on that charge? Well, we know by the definition of an E field that E is equal to the force divided by the chest charge, charge, the charge on the test charge. The force on the test charge, it, okay, so here we go. So we know that F, this implies that F is equal to E times Q prime. All right, so we can figure out what the force on that test charge is. And that is, so the force is equal to 125 newtons per coulomb times 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulomb. Coulombs go away. I got units of force. I'm happy. Where's my, here's my calculator. All right. I'm good. On 125. I'm sorry, clear. 125 times 1.602 equals 200. The force is equal to 200, and that's a significant digit, times 10 to the minus 19 newtons. Okay? That's the force. Now, what's the distance? 4.3 centimeters. So, Work is equal to force times distance. And the force is uh, in the direction of motion. Okay? So we don't have to multiply by uh, a cosine theta. So this is equal to 200 times 10 to the minus 19 newtons. And then we got to multiply it by meters to get joules. Newton meters are a joule. So that is 0 0.043 meters. Okay? Here we go. Clear. 200 times 0 0.043 equals 8.6. So that is 8.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Did you follow that? Can you see it? Let me move this closer to the edge and point it a little more down. Did you see that 8.6 times 10 to the minus 19 now joules right there? Okay, so 200 times 0 0.043 is 8.6. 10 to the minus 19 remains joules, newton meters. So we figured out the work to move a proton inside a capacitor from the negative plate to the positive plate. That's the amount of work that you have to do to move a proton in an E field. Number four. All right, number five. This is number five. We're getting there, you guys. Hang in there. Last week of school, hopefully you you picked a rainy day to write this remarkable stuff down. I love you. I hope you're happy. I hope you're learning how to how to perform in an academic uh, area. If if that's all you learned from this electrical field discussion, then that's okay with me. I want you to be able to be successful in whatever endeavor you want to go into. So how was the magnitude of a field in Millikan's oil drop experiment determined? All right, another multiple choice question. So the right answer is here. We just have to figure out which one. Using a measurable electromagnet. Nope. From the electric potential between the plates. Possibly. From the magnitude of the charge. Possibly. By an electrometer. Nope. 
How was the magnitude of the field in Millikan's oil drop experiment determined? From the electric potential between the plates. That's certainly one possibility. From the magnitude of the charge. That's how he determined what the elementary charge was. He had many, many experiments where he knew what the force on the oil drop was, and he knew what the electric field strength was, and therefore he was able to determine what the charge was on the oil drop, and he determined that each the charge on each drop was a multiple of 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Are you following me? So that was an incredible experiment uh, with, that gave him, uh, I, don't, I don't know if he designed the experiment with the idea, I'm going to figure out what the elementary charge is, or if he was just experimenting and stumbled on the elementary charge. Uh, I couldn't, I don't, I don't know the truth of that, okay, but if he was, if he was trying to find out what the elementary charge is, uh, he, he designed a, an incredibly uh, wonderful experiment to do that, okay? So I think it was from the electric potential between the plates. How was the magnitude of the field in Millikan's oil drop experiment determined? Well, it was done, it was determined this way. He knew the distance, I'm sorry, you can't see that formula. I did that again. All right. He knew the distance, and he knew the, the, the voltage that he was applying to the two plates in order to make the oil drop float. So he was able to figure out E from this formula right here. Okay? How he knew the oh he knew the E field strength was the same everywhere in between the two plates by observation. He was able to make the oil drop float without changing the voltage. He could he could when he changed the voltage up a little bit the oil drop went up, and then when he changed it back to where it was when he was floating the oil drop down here, he saw the oil drop hold still. And then when he changed it to less voltage, the oil drop started to move down in the E-field, accelerated down. So he was playing with the voltage ever so slightly, making the oil drop either move up or down uh, and or hold still. And, and, and so he, and he was able to determine the mass of the oil drop also, so he knew what the force of gravity was, so he knew what the force was on the test charge. He didn't know this, okay? Did, he, he did not know this. But uh, he did know this, and, so, and he figured this out. He figured that out with his, with his, by playing with the voltage on the plates. He knew that the distance between the plates mattered. Okay? So, uh, anyway, I need to plug my power cord back into my laptop. So I'm going to get that done, I hope, with one try. Okay, there it is. Now, let's move on. So the answer to number five is B. Okay, he didn't know what the magnitude of the charge was on, the, on any given oil drop, but he did figure out what the elementary charge was. Well, I'm here to tell you now, Having my Chromebook way up high like that is getting harder. But I think it's valuable because you can see good. So anyway, here we go. Number six. 
In an oil drop experiment, a drop with a weight of 2.0 times 10 to the minus 14 newtons was suspended motionless when the potential difference between the plates that were 63 millimeters apart was 0.78 kilovolts. All right. What was the charge of the drop? Okay. In an oil drop experiment, you've got these two plates. We'll call this one the positive. I think that's what the book, I think that's what that diagram in the book might be for. You've got this oil drop. Okay. It has a mass or a F sub G, we'll call it. The force of gravity is 2.0 times 10 to the minus 14 newtons. Right? On the oil drop. This is the oil drop. So there's this force downward. And it was it's motionless when the potential difference between the plates, these are 63 millimeters apart. 63 millimeters. And the charge here is, it says 0 0.78 kilovolts. Okay. What was the charge of the drop? All right. So we know, we know uh, F sub E is in that direction. We know the oil drop must be positively charged in this configuration. Okay. Because it's floating between the two plates. So F sub E is up. This is, this is, this is a, uh, what's that called? What kind of a diagram am I making right now with the forces? Uh, uh, I fall blank on names so often. Uh, this is called a free body diagram, right? And we know that F sub G and F sub E are perfectly balancing each other on that oil drop. All right? And the question is, what was the charge of the drop? Okay, so they're wanting us to find out what Q is. Okay, well we know what F sub E is because it's equal to F sub G, right? We know because the drop is floating that F sub E is equal to F sub G, all right? And we know that uh, the E field strength. We know the E field strength inside this capacitor because we know the voltage across the capacitor and we know the distance. All right? Are you following me? Okay, so we know what the E field strength is. E is equal to delta V over D. Um, I'll start with the more basic. Delta V is equal to ED, therefore E is equal to delta V divided by D. And that's equal to 0 0.78 times 10 to the third volts divided by 63 millimeters. That's 0 0.063 meters. All right? So a volt is a joule per coulomb. So this is a kilogram meter squared per second squared per coulomb. Right? Are you hearing me? And so M goes away. And what you have here is th this, this, this is equivalent to those units. So you, now you have a newton per coulomb. Okay? So that's correct. This is newtons per coulomb. All right. Mark all those out. And we got newtons per coulomb. So uh, 0.78 divided by 0 0.063 with my calculator. Clear. On. Clear. 0.78 divided by 0 0.063 equals 12.3 times 10 cubed newton per coulomb. 
All right, that's E. So now we know what E is. Clear. We know what the, the question is, what's the charge, right? So what are, what are we going to do? We're going to determine we're going to determine the charge by using the definition of an E field. You see this right here? This E is equal to F divided by the charge. Are you following that? We know the force and we're being asked to find and we know the E field strength and we're being asked to find the charge. So, once again, we know that E is equal to F divided by the charge on the particle. We know the force. F sub E is equal to F sub G. We know F sub G. So this guy right here, uh, if I, if I want to find the charge, I, uh, this means that the charge is equal to F divided by E. Okay? Where E is in newtons per coulomb, that makes perfect sense. Okay? So here we go. Let's plug in. Q prime is equal to uh, 2.0 times 10 to the negative 14 newtons divided by 12.3 times 10 cubed Newtons per coulomb. All right? Newtons go away. The denominator of the denominator is the numerator, so I've got units of coulomb. I'm good to, I'm good to go. So this is going to be 2, 2 divided by 12.3 is equal to 0.163. 0 0.163. Times, so this is 10 to the minus 17 coulombs. All right, so the charge on that oil drop is 0.163 times 10 to the minus 17 coulombs. Okay, is that one of those answers? Yeah. I wonder why they say negative. What did I miss? Oh, I see. It's a negative charge, otherwise it wouldn't be floating, right? I think I said it was a positive charge, otherwise it wouldn't be floating. I was wrong. It's a negative charge, okay? Because it wouldn't be floating otherwise. This is the negative, this is the positive. It must be a negative charge to float in that configuration. So this is a negative 1.163 times 10 to the minus 17, or A, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 18. Okay? Very good. Number seven. A capacitor, that problem was a little bit rough in that we needed to, we needed to pull it all together. We knew that F sub E is equal to F sub G, free body diagram. The voltage is equal to ED. That's, a def that's kind of sort of a definition. Um, but uh, but it, it is actually derived in our chapter. Uh, so then we were able to figure out what E was using this, this relationship right here. And we were able to figure out what Q prime was using the definition of E is equal to F over Q prime. Okay? Had to do some algebra, uh, etc. So that was that was kind of a hard question. Oh, and we also the sign. The, the, I'm, I'm glad that they didn't have a positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 18 because I would have gotten that one wrong, right? Because I initially I thought the oil drop would have to be positive in order to float. I don't know why I thought so, but the reality is. It would, it, if it was positive, it would sink immediately uh, because the force of gravity uh, wouldn't be 
it wouldn't be opposed. It has to be a negative charge in order for the force of gravity to be opposed. Okay, great job. Number seven. A capacitor has a capacitance of 0.093 microfarads. If the charge of the capacitor is 58 microcoulombs, what is the electric potential difference? Okay, so what's the voltage? Lots of different ways of asking questions, aren't there? I'm going to erase number four right here. And we're going to do problem number seven. Or six. I can't remember now. Okay, here we go. Number seven. A capacitor has a capacitance of 0 0.093. So C is equal to 0 0.093. I bet we're going to have to use this formula right here to solve this problem. Are you following me? C is equal to the charge divided by the electrical potential, which we're being asked to solve for the electrical potential. All right. Capacitance is 0 0.093 microfarads. All right. If the charge of the capacitor is 50, so we know Q. Q on the capacitor. Now, what does that mean? I think we should review that real quick. 58 microcoulombs. All right. What is the electric potential difference? All right, well, we know that C is equal to the charge divided by the electrical potential difference. Okay? And so, but this charge, I want to, I want, I want to make sure you guys caught that during my lecture. So this is positive. This plate there's some delta V here, right? We're being asked to solve for. There's a battery uh, in there. And the, the plus is the positive plate is 58 microcoulombs above zero, and the negative plate is 58 microcoulombs below zero. Okay? So this is the charge of the amplitude of each plate. That's what that means when they give you that charge right there. Okay, now, so uh, the, what we're being asked to solve for the voltage, right? So let's rearrange this. Delta V is equal to C, I'm sorry, is equal to Q divided by C. Okay? Move delta V over here, move the C over here. Delta V is equal to Q divided by C. All right. Now we just plug in. Delta V is equal to 58 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. That's what micro means. 10 to the minus 6. And then C is 0 0.093 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. And you'll remember a farad is a coulomb per volt. Okay? So I'm going to replace farad with coulomb per volt. And then I get rid of coulombs like that, and then I've got this per volt in the denominator, so volts come to the numerator, and I'm ready to go. I've got the right units. Okay? On. Clear. 58 divided by 0 0.093 equals 624. 624, sorry, volts. These 10 to the minus sixes cancel each other. Okay? So we got 624 volts on that capacitor, uh, and that is, looks like number C, letter C, okay? Number eight, assume 18 extra electrons are on an oil drop. Calculate the charge of the oil drop and calculate the potential difference needed 
to suspend it if it has a weight of 6.12 times 10 to the minus 14 newtons and the plates are 14.1 millimeters apart. Okay? Everybody follow that? They're trying to trick us, but they're not gonna. They can't do it. We are too smart for them. We can solve this problem. We've got this. I'm, I'm, I'm pumping myself up. <laughs> what you got to do you guys you get close to the end of the SAT you got to pump yourself up you get close to the end of that uh, exam that you're in in college maybe it's a psychology class that you're taking in college and they're asking you this essay question and you're tired because you've been studying for the last 24 hours and you've been drinking coffee and now you've got to answer the last essay question and you've got to get pumped up because you know that you can do it. You know you can. All right, so here we go. Now, here's a, a sort of kind of an example of going after it right here. Problem number eight. Assume 18 extra electrons are on an oil drop. Well, what does that mean? That's 18 times a negative 18 times the elementary charge is the, is the charge on the, on the oil drop, okay? Uh, the elementary charge is 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, if I remembered that right. Let's look. Let's make sure I got that right. Look at there. 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. We're good. All right. We've got this. So we know that 18 times that is charge. Q equals of the t uh, on the uh, oil drop. Calculate the charge of the oil drop. Well, there it is. We'll, we'll figure that out. That's the first question. Clear. 18 times. 1.602 equals 28.8. A negative 20, let's go with just negative 29. Negative 29 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Now, if we want to make that better, we can go a negative 2.9 times 10 to the minus 18 coulombs. Okay? Clear. That's one answer. And calculate the potential difference needed. This is Q, by the way. Q sub oil drop. And calculate the potential difference needed to suspend it if it has a weight of 6.12 times 10 to the minus 14 newtons. So the mass of the oil drop is equal to 6.12 times 10 to the minus 14. I'm sorry, that's not the Newtons. That's the weight, the force of gravity on the oil drop. And we know that it's suspended, right? So here's, here, here's the free body diagram. We've got F sub E suspending an oil drop. We've got F sub G down and we know that F sub E is equal to F sub G. Okay? Once again. And the plates are 14.1 millimeters apart. So let's draw the plates. Let's draw this diagram. Here's an oil drop sitting here. This is, this distance is not very much compared to the other distances we've been working with. 14.1 millimeters. Right? We know that the, there's a force up, so there's this F, F sub E is equal to uh, 6.12 times 10 to the minus 14 newtons. We know that because this is equal to 6.12 times 10 to the minus 14 newtons. Okay? So we've got this F sub E up. All right, and if it's up 
and we know that this assumes 18 extra lead. This is negatively charged. So this has to be negative on this side, and this has to be positive on this side. And the voltage is what I think we're being asked to solve for, right? The potential difference needed. Yeah, they want us to know delta V is equal to what right there, okay? So we've got this oil drop experience an electric field in between these capacitors that are four, these capacitor plates that are 14.1 millimeters, okay? Everybody follow that? All right, so now I think we're to a point where we've got one of these formulas that we can use, okay? The question is what's delta V? So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to calculate E using this definition, and then we can calculate delta V using this definition, th this formula. Everybody follow that? We're going to figure out what E is using this, and then we're going to figure out what delta V is using this. Okay? There we have it. We know how to do this problem. All right, so E. What is E? E equals what? We need to know that so we can figure out what delta V is. So E is equal to F divided by Q, which is equal to 6.12 times 10 to the minus 14 newtons divided by uh, negative, well, we'll just say 2.9. 2.9 times 10 to the minus 18 coulombs, right? We, by the way, we know E is in this direction. Everybody follow that? This E field is in this direction, okay? Positive to negative. So E is down. 6.12 divided by 2.9, clear, on, clear, 6.12 divided by 2.9 is 2.1, uh, and then we've got uh, minus 14 minus a minus 18 times 10 to the fourth uh, newtons per coulomb. Okay, that's E. Now, if we, we, we know that delta V is equal to ED, and that's what we're being asked to discover now, delta V is equal to uh, 2.1 times 10 to the fourth newtons per coulomb times the distance, which is uh, 0 0.014 um, 1 meters. This is the distance. This is E, and this is D. Delta V is equal to ED, right? We've got, we, we knew we needed that in our next step to figure out what delta V is. Delta V is equal to ED. All right, so here we go. We're almost there. Clear. 2.1 times 0 0.0141 equals uh, this equals 0 0.030 times 10 to the fourth. And this is a newton meter or a joule per coulomb or a volt. Okay? And we can improve that answer by saying 123.0. Times 10 squared, right? 1, 2, 3.0, 0, 0.030 0, 0 times 10 to the fourth. Yeah, we could, we could just say 300 volts and be done with it. Delta V. All right. So this is 300 volts. 
and this is 2.1 times 10 to the fourth newtons per coulomb. Everybody follow that? Number eight. That was number eight, right? Yeah. Okay, we did that, you guys. We did the standardized practice test for chapter 21. Heavenly Father, you are a miracle worker. You give us what we need in order to accomplish what we're asked to accomplish. Um, far more than, uh, than we deserve. We are blessed to have minds that know how to think. We're blessed to have minds that know when we're getting tired and need nutrition or sleep. And we know that we're less productive if we don't get nutrition and sleep properly. And we are uh, familiar with how to accomplish. And we thank you for the ability of accomplishment. And uh, it sure is a blessing to me to get to be a teacher here at Greenwood Christian Academy. Uh, and it sure is a, a blessing to get to be in relationship with my students that are here at Greenwood Christian Academy. You guys are awesome. Each of you unfathomably precious. And uh, it is my pleasure to uh, have been able to go through this quick lesson with you. I love you. Have a great rest of your day.